this is Ken, and you are watching ECT TV, episode 17. So, I'm back after a two week hiatus. Um, I had my second wedding anniversary. My husband and I have been together for 12 years, but we got married two years ago. And someday I'm going <laughs> to write a blog post or a little book about our wedding. Um, it was totally DIY and it was green as an eco-friendly as well and it was beautiful it was very non-traditional and um, so that's we were out exploring nature during our anniversary and um, away from the internet so I didn't have a chance to do these ECT TV episodes for the past couple of weeks but we're back and this week is going to be just a little bit different than the other episodes. I've been getting a lot of questions about wire, so different questions about wire. So I thought I would just do a whole overview of wire on this episode so you can learn. And of course, if you have any questions after this episode, please feel free to um, send me an email. Um, can contact me at KimberlyKohler.com, my website. There's a contact form there. And maybe I'll answer your question on an upcoming episode. So let's get started. So to start off, I'd like to talk about wire safety. So I have my fun gloves on, my cool little glasses on, and it's not just a fashion statement, it's for safety. Now a lot of people actually don't talk about wire safety very often or um, safety precautions when making any sort of jewelry. Um, unless like you do metal smithing or something like that, it might not even be something you think about very much, but it is important. So especially when you're working with wire, you may cut wire and um, wire is very uh, springy, so often if you're not careful, the wire can go flying. Um, so wearing safety glasses is important to protect your eyes. Your eyes are super valuable as you know and if something happened to them it would be so horrible so wearing protective eye co uh, covering is very important um, especially when you're working with wire um, my glasses are also actually reading glasses so the older I've gotten and um, the more I use my eyes, I'm finding it harder to see what I'm doing when I'm working, um, making jewelry, or especially working with wire. And so I often wear my glasses um, just for the fact that I can see the more intricate um, wire and my designs while I'm making it. So um, I suggest eye covering. And if you need to wear glasses, for you know magnifying I highly suggest that too um, there's actually like cool kind of headgear pieces you can get when you're working with jewelry um, that have a magnetized eyewear in them and also protect um, as long as your eyes are covered I feel comfortable that you're going to be okay as long as you're not doing anything too wild and crazy and so um, the next thing I want to talk about are these gloves I have they're this beautiful blue color. Um, these are actually um, sold for knitters um, and they prevent, help prevent carpal tunnel. Um, I know a lot of people who make things and very rarely, until there's actually a problem, do I know that they wear any kind of um, glove or brace to kind of protect their wrists. Carpal tunnel is a huge problem for um, artists and makers and um, wearing gloves, these protective gloves um, to protect your wrist, really um, you'll be grateful that you did it in the long run. Um, they're great for typing too, if you do a lot of typing like I do. Um, I don't always remember to wear them, but I often do and they are very, very helpful. So you can find them, if you, you probably won't 
necessarily find them in the jewelry section of a craft store, but if you look in the knitting section or crochet section, um, you'll, you'll find them. Um, and they're really not that expensive and super helpful and, you know, good for protecting your wrists for the long run. Okay, so the next subject I would like to talk about is wire temper or hardness. So the temper refers to the hardness of the wire. Um, you'll find dead soft, half hard, and full hard, or sometimes it's just called hard um, wire. And they're all useful for different things, but I most often use half hard wire um, because it's kind of the most versatile wire you can use. So the wire kind of goes by exactly how it sounds. So dead soft wire is very malleable, um, it's soft, it's very easy to manipulate. However, it is not very structurally sound, so you don't want to use it if you're creating some sort of structure. Um, like my necklace, for example, um, wouldn't keep its shape with, uh, with dead soft wire unless I did a lot of work to harden it, um, which that is a subject we're going to get to in a little bit here. Um, Half hard, like I said, is most versatile. You can use it for lots of things. Um, and actually, you can use half hard for structural type jewelry um, if you use the right gauge, which is another subject which we'll be talking about. Um, so half hard is like Goldilocks. And then there's full hard, or just plain hard. And that is very... Uh, hard wire, hard to manipulate, good for structural things, but it also breaks very easily. So, um, there are the three different types of wire you want to look for. If you're just getting started with wire working and doing different wraps and that sort of thing, um, half hard is what you're going to probably want to look for. Another thing I'd like to say is um, I actually use artist wire quite often um, that can be found in the craft store. Um, especially like when I'm first designing things, I'm not sure how it's going to work out yet and I don't want to use sterling silver because um, I just want to work out a design first. That kind of wire often does not um, indicate a temper on it. Um, it doesn't say what its hardness is, but it is pretty similar to half hard. So um, if you're used to working with that and you're ready to move to sterling silver, half hard is probably what you've been using. So that is the hardness or temper of wire. So now, as promised, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about wire gauge. So wire gauge is the number that indicates the thickness of the wire. Wire gauge goes from 10 to 28. Um, the main thing to remember about wire gauge is the lower the number, the thicker the wire. So it's kind of opposite of what you may think. So a 10 gauge wire is much thicker than a 28 gauge wire. And like hardness, um, that number kind of indicates how easy the wire is to work with. So like a 16 gauge wire will hold its shape pretty well, whereas a 28 gauge wire, it, it's not going to so well. Um, so when I was mentioning about half hard wire before, um, changing the gauge of the wire with each project, depending on whether it's structural or it needs to be more malleable, is how, how you can use half hard wire and use it in your projects depending on the project. So something else I wanted to mention is that wire gauge is actually not standard throughout the world. In North America we have um, a, a standard that we follow and it's kind of from electronics. Um, it's not really that important to, to get into all that. It's, I think, more important to know what kind of gauge you should use for projects. But um, it's good to be aware that it's not quite standard throughout the world. But 
it's off so little that you probably wouldn't even notice, to be honest with you. So, you will decide what gauge you're going to use on a jewelry project, depending on the project. So, some examples. Um, 20 gauge, um, I use all the time for most everything, to be honest with you. Um, it's good for wire wrapping rings. Um, I make earring wires with that gauge. I make shapes most often with 18 gauge. So like this necklace that I'm wearing, for example, it's a project from Rediscover Your Creativity through making jewelry and e-course that I have. Um, that This is 18 gauge and I also harden it um, with a hammer, which I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, about how you can harden your wire. Um, and uh, something like 24 gauge is really good when you're like maybe adding beads to an already a structure that you've made out of wire. Um, if you're doing a lot of wrapping, something like that. So there are some ideas for you. Um, so just know that you're looking for the, the gauge is the size, um, the thickness of the, the wire, the lower the number the thicker it is. I just wanted to quickly bring up memory wire. Memory wire is not good to use for making shapes or uh, for your wire work. Um, it is basically good for you know what it's good for. It's very um, strong and keeps its shape. I don't know very much about memory wire because I haven't really used it very often. Um, but you can't like really manipulate it and you certainly don't want to use your uh, normal wire cutters with it either because it will just ding them up and make them dull and and kind of mess them up a little bit. So I just wanted to just point that out just so you know when you're looking for wire to avoid memory wire unless like you're making one of those uh, bracelets that wraps around your wrist, something like that. It's awesome for that kind of thing, not awesome for um, wire work. So the next topic is wire shape. Wire comes in three basic shapes. Um, they're round, half round, and square. Um, round you will find works for pretty much everything. It's the most versatile. Um, half round you kind of use that more, um, you can use it for ring shanks or if you are kind of bunching together um, a bunch of wires and you need to bind them together you would use, you could use um, half round, it works great for that. And then there's square wire, which you basically can use the same as round wire, and it's also great for, um, you know, binding wire uh, stacks together too. I don't do much of that. I mostly only use round wire, and even when I make my wire wrapped rings, I use round wire. So, um, round is probably what you're going to use the most of, so look for round. So now I wanted to take you through just a few of the basic tools that you will want to have when you're working with wire. Um, I will show you the ones that I think are you're going to always need. There's three that I use constantly and I'll show you a few other ones that you might want to invest in as well. Alright, so I wanted to show you a few of the tools that you will um, want to use when you're working with wire. Um, I'm going to show you my three very basic, uh, you will always need tools, and then I'll show you a few more. So, wire cutters. Um, wire cutters are very important because they cut the wire. And in case you're not super familiar with wire cutters, um, I'll just show you kind of um, how they work. Uh, they have two sides. So there's this back flat side and this front side that's a little more kind of concave there. If you cut wire on the side, you get a flush cut. If you cut it on the side, you get a pinch cut. So often when I'm doing tutorials and 
things of that nature, I will tell you to use a flush cut. So what I simply mean is to cut it with the flat side. So the side will cut the wire like that. And now there'll be a nice flat edge on the end of the wire. And of course if I use the other side, it's a pinch cut and it's kind of a more pointy cut. It's kind of a tip at the end. Um, the next thing you will need quite often are chain nose pliers. Um, these are very important for all kinds of wire wrapping, wire working. Um, they're flat on the inside so you don't uh, mess up your wire. I'll show you. I have a pair of serrated ones that have teeth. You do not want to use these with wire because they will leave marks on your wire. The next tool are round nose pliers. And so of course they are round. Um, there's all kinds of different sizes and then there's the this, this standard size. And um, you'll often t see me put a mark on my pliers so if you're like making a lot of loops and you want them all to be uniform in your project if you just take a sharpie and mark on it then you can just follow that line and all your loops will be uniform throughout the whole project so those three are kind of the most important that you'll use the most often so the wire cutters, chain nose pliers, and round nose pliers and then building off of that, if you want to add to your collection, the next thing I would get would be bent nose pliers. They are bent. Um, I believe some people even call them jump ring pliers or something like that. Um, they are great for opening jump rings <laughs> and they almost act as a second hand when you're doing wrapping and things like that. Um, they're very helpful for that sort of thing. So I would recommend those. And then a couple other types of pliers you might want to have around are these very long needle nose pliers. Um, I sometimes use these when I'm making different shapes like spirals that the spiral is open in um, because you can get the tip in very easily. Um, these are square nose pliers here because um, they have a very blunt end. Um, and these I actually do use sometimes on opening jump rings and stuff like that. Or if you need to make a very sharp bend in a wire, these are great for that. But to be honest with you, chain nose pliers can do that too. So, like I said, these aren't quite as important as the other ones. Another tool you may want to have are these nylon jaw pliers. Um, these are used to harden wire. You pull the wire through and it hardens it. Um, I'm going to talk about um, work hardening wire next, um, so I'll kind of show you that. But um, they're also good if you kind of have some wire that's bent, um, if you just pull the wire through, it straightens it up. Um, and that's good if you need straight wire because wire often comes on a spool or in kind of like these circular loopy things. So if you need to straighten your wire, these are great for that. Um, quite often you can use your fingers though instead. Um, and then these are great too because you can, as I need to do right now, replace the nylon and um, um, and they are just like new again. So finally I wanted to show you a couple of hammers. Um, there are a couple of different kinds. So this is a chasing hammer. Um, it has this flat side and so when you hit wire it flattens it. Um, and you'd use the side to make like different shapes. Um, I you wouldn't really use this so much for wire, I wouldn't think. Um, I haven't. It's more like when you're using like a sheet of metal and you're hammering shapes in. Um, but this will f this will flatten wire. And then this is a nylon hammer. 
um, and a rawhide or like a hard plastic hammer, they all do the same thing. This will harden your wire without actually flattening it. So this is a very handy hammer to have around. And then, of course, you'll, you'd also need some sort of steel block or an anvil. Um, I have a couple of different sizes here. Um, this size is pretty much perfect for everything. This is a little smaller, but honestly, you don't really need much bigger than this. Um, and this actually came along with my one hammer, so that's why I have that. Um, and so that's hammers, hammers and steel blocks. So if I could only buy a few tools, um, what I would buy would be uh, wire cutters, chain nose pliers, and round nose pliers, and then I would also get a either rawhide or nylon hammer um, and you don't have to go expensive it works even the inexpensive hammers work just fine um, with the tools you might want to start out inexpensively but once you like start upgrading your tools one by one you'll realize like it does make a difference I love my wire cutters the most because um, they're very comfortable in my hand and they're kind of wonderful. These are upgraded from my old ones, um, but, you know, it'd be nice to have these ergonomic handles on all of my pliers. So slowly, one by one, I will upgrade them. But these are the things I would get first for working with wire. So earlier I mentioned hardening your wire to help it keep its shape. Um, so there are a few ways you can do this. Working with wire, just doing your normal thing, just working with it hardens it. It's called work hardening. Um, so no matter what you do, it's going to get a little bit harder. And so you, sometimes that's enough, depending on the project. Um, Another way you can harden your wire is to use nylon coated um, nylon tip pliers and basically you just put the wire in between them and you run it down the wire. This is also a good way to straighten your wire. Um, you don't want to do this too much though because then you'll have your wire be too hard to work with and you don't want that. Um, another option is to use a hammer, um, and as I showed you, there's a couple of different kinds of hammers. Um, so when you're done with something, when you're done with your project, uh, you can hammer it. So sometimes you do it as you go, like if you make a pair of iron wires, uh, you'll hammer them when you're done. Uh, I made this piece for my necklace that I'm wearing and then I hammered it before I added the other pieces. So hammering is another way to harden your work. And of course the other way to harden your work, um, your, to harden your wire is to tumble it when you're done. So that would be good for something like a ring, something like that. But you have to be careful with using a tumbler that you don't have a stone or, you know, a bead or something that could be potentially, uh, you know, damaged in the tumbling of your piece. So there are the basic ways that you can harden your work. So like I said, it gets hard just from working with it itself. Nylon tipped pliers and hammering. Well, I hope you learned something from this sort of quick and dirty overview of wire. Um, maybe you picked up something you didn't know before or answered some of your questions. If you still have questions, please contact me and I'll get back to you. I might do a blog post or I might do a future ECT TV episode with your question. Or I might just email you back and tell you the answer. <laughs> Um, you can contact me at my website, KimberlyKohler.com, um, which is K-I-M-B-E-R-L-I-E-K-O-H-L-E-R.com. I'll put a link down below the video so you can easily just click on through to it. Um, and I'll also have show notes for this episode so that you can kind of um, browse through all of these tips 
at your own pace. I know it pretty fast through everything. So that might help you or you can also sign up for my newsletter. Um, I send out a PDF of um, each episode as I release them to my newsletter, newsletter subscribers um, each week. So if you sign up for my newsletter you will get future episodes in PDF form which is easier to download and print and you can have it right at your workspace if you need to refer back to it. Um, I'm also working on a new uh, free kind of how to get started at jewelry making e-course that is going out to all my newsletter subscribers so um, you sign up you'll get that too so thank you so much for watching and make sure you subscribe to my um, YouTube channel and I will see you next week with a brand new episode